Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. This video is about the blur filter in On One Photo Raw. Describe the various controls, show you a few cases where you may want to reach for this filter for your photography. Really quick, if you enjoy videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking to learn more about On One Photo Raw, check out my On One Learning Center free resource on my website, a whole ton of stuff there that you can get your hands really deep into On One Photo Raw. So let's have a look Look at the blur filter. So the blur filter is available in the effects module. I'll hit add filter, choose blur, and let me go through the controls here. The, the, the photo is obviously very, very soft right now. And a matter of fact, so I don't get too dizzy here, well, uh, first control, we'll take the opacity down so we don't have too much of that blur happening. But like with most tools, we have our styles across the top and a few additional ones in here. And you can see as you hover over them, you get a preview of what's going on. Underneath, these styles really set values in the filter itself, and there are five different kinds of blur. Now, the first one and last one, Gaussian and Box, these are very similar. If I click on either one of them, they each have an amount control, and they add just a general out-of-focus blur to the photo. The Box option retains edges ever so slightly more. So if you're adding a blur and you want to maintain a little bit of an edge on things, you can choose box. This, the differences are very subtle. Let me push this all the way back up at 100%. We'll take a look at this mountain here, which is an edge for box versus, say, Gaussian. You can see that the Gaussian is more aggressive in its blurring, and box is a little less aggressive. You know, Describing that as maintaining edges, but you know, this is a blur, so you're gonna blur edges here. But that's the difference between box and Gaussian. Motion simulates left to right, up to down, like camera jitter. And the default is, you know, it looks like left to right here, using this mountain as our guide. And let's push that right up next to our controls so we can see this here. The distance is how much of that motion do you wanna have, and the angle is the direction. So as I go to the left, this kind of goes on a you know, a diagonal, let's say pointing to the northeast, you push it to the right, you go southwest, all the way to the very right is up and down. And that connects back to these styles, right? You have jitter, which is kind of your up and down motion, and then you have, say, camera shake, which is your left to right motion. So you can see how these different styles are really just setting these controls. Also notice that for motion, we have distance, we have angle, and we have smoothing. So you can make that softer or harder if you need to. So if you're looking to add in some type of you know, camera shake look, you have that ability with the blur tool. The next one we have is radial. Now this one's quite interesting. We get like a zoom kind of look. And let me zoom out to full screen here so you can see what's going on. You have this radial blur where things are zooming into a particular point in the scene. And that point is set with these crosshairs. So if I highlight that crosshair, I can click and drag around the photo to set the point. So you can start to see, you get the idea of doing some of these like camera zoom looks and things like that. This is uh, doing some interesting things for the sky. I'll show you an example of using this more in practice later in the video. Controls we have is the amount of that radial blur. The, the farther you push it, the more like, almost supersonic it gets. The less you start to still maintain some of the elements that were actually in the photo. Quality is exactly what it describes. How smooth, really. Uh, it's not so like smooth. Smoothing is smoothing. Quality is more like the the grain that's in the individual uh, like, you know, fingers and tendrils. Let's zoom in here, and if I pull the quality down, it gets a little grainier. This may not come through on YouTube. It's even hard for me to see on the big screen here. The quality will give you a little more uh, finer grained radials, and then smoothing, of course, makes things softer or harder edged. Let me keep that smoothing all the way down there. We'll try the quality one more time. Maybe we see a difference. There we go. If I push it really far down, you see all this like, you know, kind of grain and noise that's going on in the blur if I have no quality. So I inch that quality slider up. It smooths that out and gets rid of it. And the last type we have is surface. 
zoom back out on our photo here. Surface tries to do uh, a hybrid of blurring out softer things but maintaining edges on crisper things. Zooming back in on our mountain again, you can see this edge of this mountain is still pretty well pronounced even as I push the amount very far. Uh, this is not a pleasing look at all for this photo. But you can see how the surface blur is different than a, a Gaussian blur or a box blur. Things that don't have that big crisp edge in a Gaussian or box, those are going to get blurred out entirely. And the threshold controls, you know, what to consider edges. So if I pull this down to the left, you can see more of the scene is considered to have crisp edges. More of this mountain stays crisp even as I push the amount, whereas the sky is getting almost a painterly kind of look. And so you can start to see an idea of using this type of filter if you wanted to create kind of like a, a watercolor-ish type of painterly look for your photo. So recap that really quick here. We had Gaussian and Box. Those are your, you know, big, broad, very blurry types of look, then out of focus look. Box is a little less aggressive than Gaussian. Motion, left to right, up and down. You control the angle and how smooth it is with the controls there so you can simulate camera shake and jitter. Radial does that zooming type of effect. And surface does what I'll call like a watercolor type of effect. Let me show you a couple examples where you might use blur in your photography and uh, see how it can help shape your photos. Let me reset that blur. And one example is just using a very light amount of blur to soften a sky, like in this scene here. Uh, I'll choose box because it's a little less aggressive than Gaussian. And right now I'm just watching the sky as I control the amount. So just adding a little touch of softness. And if you get stuck between amount, like, oh, three is you know not enough and four is too much, you get somewhere around there. Well, go a little bit more and take down your opacity. So you have that opacity control to dial things in and get just the amount of blur you want. And then we use our masking tools, right? We'd mask this to just the sky. And so uh, really quickly, we hit our mask. We'll grab the AI quick mask. I want to drop the foreground, keep the sky, apply that, let it go do its masking, a little bit of refinement on the edges, and you're all set. And so now I have a, a softer touch to just the sky before and after. Very subtle, right? Very subtle. I don't want to soften this sky entirely. But before that blur, looking like this area here, after that blur, just taking a little bit of the edge off the sky. And as you can see, right around the edges of the mountain here, we'd need to do some refinement. I didn't do that in this mask here. This isn't a video about masking. It's a video about blur. You have your masking tools, refine things so you get the blur to look just right. Another use for the blur filter is if you're creating like a picture in a picture look and you want that center picture to jump out a little bit, you blur the background, the lower layer. This is using a layered workflow. So here I have the same photo. I've made a copy of that layer and I just put a border on it. If I select my bottom layer, add my blur, and I can push the amount pretty far now because I want that background, you just kind of go out of focus. I don't want the attention to be paid on the photo in the background. Maybe in this one, I'll switch to a Gaussian and make that even heavier. Push the opacity all the way up. So you get a hint, okay, that same photo is kind of back there, uh, but it's not my primary subject. And uh, if you're noticing this is a little dingier, I did also reduce the saturation for that lower level right before that after that, just to downplay a little more. But the point here is you can use a blur on a lower layer to add you know, softness and context. You see this a lot in documentary films where there's a photograph they want to show, but it can't fill the full screen. So they'll take the same photo, enlarge it and blur it and put it behind the inner set photo. So this is a technique you can use the blur filter for as well.
One more is the radial blur. We can use that to create zoom looks like you know cars or trains or things that are supposed to be in motion. Sometimes you see it with portraits. I'll use it here to add a little bit of motion to a sky. And uh, this tends to work well when there is, uh, I'll say, space in the sky. Let me take this opacity all the way down. I have a blur applied. I've already created a mask, so I'm not blurring the foreground. But I've got gaps, right? Gaps between you know pockets of white and pockets of blue, because that will create some good lines when we create the radial. So I'll change this over to a radial blur. And by default, the point is in the center. So you can control, you know, how much of that do you want to have happen. But I'll say the defaults are usually pretty pleasing. And if anything, I tend to back down the opacity some just so the uh, the 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 overall look isn't too strong. But the key thing is setting the point at which the center of the radius is. You want that to be below the horizon. It makes no sense for these clouds to be jumping off of the earth up into the sky. So we want to drag this down so it's below the horizon. And then you can decide, do I want them zooming out to the right? Do I want them kind of heading off into the center? Depends on what the focal point of your scene is. Maybe I'll just do here. And I will point out again, there are cleanup things you tend to need to do with the mask, like around the edge of these mountains. I can see that some masking cleanup is needed. And so I have my masking brush set. I'm painting it away. And I can just kind of ease my way around the edges of these hills, making sure that I don't add unnecessary blur. And some of this is precise. Some of this is a little bit of art form because the different tones in those clouds you're making those radials with, they might intermix with your subjects and it looks like you're adding blur when you're not. So zoom in, do your masking, you know, pay attention to those details. But those are the examples of the blur filter. This is a good one for adding a little bit of motion to your sky. So that is the blur filter and on one photo raw. A bit more in that filter than maybe you thought about before. And uh, hopefully this gives you a few ideas of how you might wanna use it in your photography do tend to want to use it in conjunction with masking your opacity. Uh, I'm a less is more kind of person, especially when it comes to the blur filter, just in, you know, nudging things and, and adding a little bit of nuance to your photos. But that's it. That's the, uh, that's the filter. You got questions, go ahead, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.